I'm a new professor at EPFL in Switzerland. I am a classically trained mechanical engineer who's working on robotics at the moment. And I will, unlike the other speakers, I will tell you more about what I do as a woman in science and what I do in robotics world and how it's going to improve our lives. So I'm going to talk about a new type of robot, which is called soft robots. And I'm going to tell you about how is it different from the, the conventional robots, and why is it important, and why it excites me to go to work every day. So before I start talking about my research, I'm a member of NCCR Robotics Group in Switzerland. NCCR represents national centers of competence in research in robotics. And uh, the mission of this NCCR group is in collab collaborative research among the robotics researchers, um, improving the education for the youth, and advancement of women's position in the field. And uh, at the end, we want to transfer the technology that we gained from the research directly in into in industries. There are 24 professors and their labs uh, in this group. And this includes four institutes, uh, uh, two Swiss Institute, Federal Institute of Technology, one in Lausanne and one in Zurich, and two universities. Um, and I'm very excited to say that I'm one of three women in this group, which means and two, only two of us are doing robotics. So this is a small number, but we are doing very significant research in robotics in Switzerland. The focus of this group is to improve the quality of human lives through medical robots, re rehabilitation robots, um, search and rescue robots. You can imagine in Switzerland with all the mountains, snow, avalanche, you would need a robot to rescue you. So those are the areas that we are focusing our efforts in. And among those, um, I'm working on soft robots. So what's exactly soft robots? I don't know if you get the reference of Baba Papa world. This is a world where if you don't have something, you create that by your moving your body. So if you want a violin, you transform your body into violin. You interact with the world. And this is how our world works. For every living um, cell or um, living beings, they react to stimulus. They react to the environment. They react to the force that's, against, uh, that, that's applied to your body. And that's how you prove that you're alive. So, so that put that thought outside. There are 43 muscles in the face alone, human face alone, so which you work to make expressions, to talk, laugh, frown to make a robot that can exactly replicate that movement with 43 muscles on the face is impossible. Maybe that's why the Terminator could never smile. <laughs> Recreating the softness of a smile is our challenge as a repetition, of course. Um, and I think how we can achieve it is by bringing out the numbers of degrees of freedom on the face or in the motors or in the robots. Well, what do I mean by degrees of freedom exactly? So, I just say it's impossible to recreate all the muscles in the face. However, as a robotician, it's a challenge, and we've been working long time on it. So on the, on the far side, that way, that's a human eye model that we try to recreate. So human eyes have three degrees of freedom, which means we would look up and down, left and right, and it actually has torsion on the side. So I developed that for a psychology department who wanted to prove that the movement of the eye actually correlates deeply into the human emotions. So we try to make that. So it doesn't look exactly like what human eyes would look because human eyes are actually connected with the six tendons that pull and, uh, push and pull on the eyeballs. But in order to make a robotic representation of it, you have to make assumptions, you have to, you have to kill something, you have to bring up something, you have to know exact assumptions or the results that you're going for. So even though you cannot recreate the exact format, you can replicate or you can simulate it. Another project I was working on as a uh, robotician, it's a human hand. Human hand has about 70, uh, 70 degrees of freedom on the hand alone. Recreating all of that is impossible. So as long as he makes a dexterous movement as in holding the can or doing simple hand movements, that hand can do it by reducing the, uh, the required degrees of freedom, which is in this case eight. Using the same hand, you can also make 
uh, uh, same idea, you can also make a robotic arm that can grab on baseball and throw it. It looks very uh, sophisticated at the moment, but if you ask it to make a burpee push-ups, you won't be able to do it because you cannot replicate all the um, degrees of freedom that exist in the real human arm. That brings me up to, okay. That brings me to the issue where the soft robots come in. So if you were to call the hard robots that what I created before, the anthropomorphic robots, the issue with that is that once you can see the design of the hard robot, is that you cannot change the design anymore. You pick out your motor, you pick out your computer, you pick out your circuit, and the design is fixed. If you wanted to do something else, you can't. You have to start from all from the beginning. The idea behind soft robot is that you don't have a one particular form. It's a transformable robot that will transform itself according to tasks that's required at the spot. It transforms itself for the environment that's, uh, that's uh, applied onto itself. And it has no fixed format so that it can actually transform itself to anything that you want. So for example, if you had a face figure that you want to match up, there's no person has exactly the same face and not exactly the same curvature. And you'll be able to do that with a transformable robotic um, device. Um, you, you have a multiple, this is not really a completely future idea, but if you have a flexible screen with a flexible uh, monitor, flexible keyboard, you can roll it up within your sleeves to carry around your computer. If you have a robotic device that works as an exoskeleton that you can wear as like your pants, it would support your, um, support your activity while it's needed by being stiff and being flexible when you don't need the support. So that's the area that I want to work with, I'm working on, and that's the soft robots as in definition. So I was keep mentioning about degrees of freedom. Um, so to give you a better idea, what's the most uh, intuitive, uh, high degrees of freedom object you can think of? To me, it was paper origami. Origami is a paper art where you use a single piece of paper to make multiples of shapes from two-dimensional object to 3D. So as you can see in the video, it makes a um, jaguar, a temple pagoda from a single piece of paper. And this is possible because you can fold the paper in any direction you want by predefined sequence, predefined movement. But you can imagine how many folds you have to make and you have to memorize them all. Imagine if you can have an origami paper that can do this all by itself, just by touching. So this is a very good uh, representation by an artist where a bunch of uh, automobile designers touch this mutating matter where by touching it can change the design of the car, so which will show the clients a better image of what car they would want to have. So that's what I'm trying to work on. Can you make a robotic device that can transform itself depending on its environment? I'm talking about robots and I can't use my uh, pointer. <laughs> Yes? Okay. So this is a good demonstration of what I'm talking about. So we have a flat sheet of uh, robot that transforms into a little ball when it needs to go through a, um, a small hole. And then when it lands in the final destination, it turns itself into a space shuttle. Is this a dream? This is a proof of concept. Uh, this is our one of the uh, uh, early proof of concept for the robotic origami. It measures about two and a half inches by two and a half inches, and it's about half a millimeter thick. So right now it transformed into a pyramid structure, and this one we're trying to make a space shuttle out of the same, uh, exactly the same robotic device. So in this case, what happened was we pre-programmed what we were gonna make within the sheet. So we programmed the one shape to be a, tri a triangular pyramid, another shape being the uh, space shuttle. So what are the main challenges? That was a good proof of concept, but we need to improve on it because it's far beyond from the mutating matter that you saw in the car. The most important things or biggest challenges are the actuators, electronics, and the body material. Actuator is a fancy word of motors, motors that can be controlled with numeric signals, and the electronics and body. And if they can be all embedded within a single device, like so, with multiple layers, it can be crumbled into any direction that it receives from the controller. And that's our challenge. 
Another thing is, instead of just having a flat panel of a sheet that can transform itself, we can also, also think about small module blocks that can, we can control, orient in different ways, and actuate depending on our signal. And we can create any type of movement depending on the orientation of all these blocks. So these are the two things I'm looking at as a motor sources. And I mentioned the challenge of elastic circuits. Because the robot conforms and transforms in any direction you want, depending on the environment, the circuits and sensors that transforms and uh, uh, stretches out with the robot is super important. What you see in the video right now is a little LED light that's uh, lit in um, yellow. And a rubbery circuit, which is filled in with a liquid metal that can stretch out with a, with a, um, with a property of the rubbery silicone. And you can see the LED light still lit, which means we can use the same principle in developing a circuit that can stretch out. And we can use the same principle toward making a cer um, sensors that can stretch out with the uh, robot. Another way of introducing elastic circuit or sensors is by introducing mesh circuits or mesh patterns within the copper traces. And these are the couple of options that we're um, putting our much of research into. So if you had all this put together, do you just make an origami sheet that's fun to play with? One thing is you can make a tiny crawler that's made out of, in this case, four legs. And it measures about half an inch uh, tall and it weighs about two grams. So it's super light, super small, and imagine you can make, build this out of your own uh, origami kit, but in robotics. One of the super advantages, or the biggest advantage of having a soft origami or soft robotics is that it can conform its body in any way you want to. So like I mentioned earlier, you can imagine a facial prosthetic device that can have an embedment of a sensor that you require. In this case, what I was trying to show is that it's embedded with um, sensors that can measure the minute muscle movement on the face. So it can be used for the patients with a facial palsy who does not have an exact, uh, exact way of measuring the goodness or the badness of their condition. And by this, you can measure uh, numerical wise how good the condition of the patient has been improved or it's been worsened. And then you can give a proper treatment according to that reading. Another very exciting project I'm working on in the lab right now is uh, research that we are doing with the spinal cord injury patients. What the research in the spinal cord injury research are doing right now is by injecting special cocktail in the region of the uh, injury, they can reactivate, uh, reactivate the regions of um, the disconnection between the neurons from the brain and the neurons coming back from the uh, legs. And what happens right now is that they test all this um, uh, uh, test their, their findings on the rats, but these rats, which are 200 grams in the weight, must have their independent physical therapist. F physical therapist meaning physical therapists like the ones that we visit in the hospital. And you know it's already difficult to get an appointment with them, but you can imagine they need to take care of 200 rats per semester. It's a lot of physical therapy for them. So we thought this might be an area for soft robots. 200 gram rats, the legs are very, very fragile. So we need a soft robotic device that can conform around the rat's body and legs and give enough support so that they can walk again on the treadmill. Yes, they do have a dirt treadmill. So what you saw in the video briefly there was um, the initial findings of how these uh, soft robots can be very comfortable for them instead of having the actual physical therapist working on their legs. So that concludes my uh, research. Um, so I just want to go try the point saying that soft robot is a grand challenge. It's a little different from the conventional robots that's completely made of hard stuff. And I hope these um, the soft devices and soft robots will find uh, their way into our lives seamlessly blending in. So thank you and uh, hopefully you have a good night tonight.